A National Science Advisory Board cautioned the public this week against making broad generalizations about the worthiness of crops simply because they are genetically engineered. The group's 407-page report, released Tuesday after two years of work, said no credible studies have provided clear evidence that engineered crops pose a health risk to humans or to the environment when compared with conventionally bred crops. The committee's chair, Fred Gold, however, also acknowledged that detecting subtle or longer-term risk can be difficult. The idea of putting them all in one basket, you know, it's something that's easy to do, but that's not in our report. We sort of very much try to steer away from those kind of broad sweeping generalizations. The 20-member committee, representing the congressionally authorized National Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine, analyzed two decades worth of studies on the world's 12 commercially available GM crops, focusing most closely on corn, soybeans and cotton. The committee found that while average yields for those commodities continue to increase since the introduction of GM crops, it is not at a faster rate than was evident in the years leading up to their introduction. A finding that was surprising to many of us and we had to scratch our heads about was the fact that we could find no evidence from USDA data that genetic engineering has increased the rate at which U.S. crop yields are increasing. However, the report did find that insecticide use has decreased in certain crops, apparently benefiting both GM and conventional farms, as the modified crops appeared to help reduce problematic insect populations. The committee also found that biodiversity did not suffer in fields where GM crops were planted when compared with those planted with conventional crops. Gold said that drawing conclusions regarding herbicide was more complicated, however, because of the data available. People have debated this as to whether there was a decrease or you could see a small dip and an increase. What we concluded in the end is that this data is not very meaningful at all because it just takes into account the number of kilograms, number of pounds of herbicide used. If somebody came up with a new herbicide that was very environmentally friendly, but instead of using one pound per acre, you had to use two pounds per acre, well, you've increased the use of herbicides, but you have less environmental effect. The committee examined cancer patterns after 1996, when GM crops were first released, and found no evidence of a corresponding increase. They also found no noticeable difference when comparing cancer rate patterns in the U.S. with those in Europe, where people do not generally eat GM foods. The study, funded by Biomedical Sciences Foundation, Burroughs Welcome Fund, and others, found evidence of so-called gene flow, where genes pass from one population to another, but said it was not a major concern as there isn't currently evidence that engineered products are unsafe. The report did urge farmers to do a better job of using more variety in their weed and insect management to slow the emergence of resistance to chemicals. Gold was also critical of new GM crops that would encourage farmers to simply use combinations of existing herbicides. The new herbicide in Lissaduo, manufactured by Dow AgroSciences, for example, combines older herbicide components, 2,4-D, and glyphosate. The idea of just using tank mixes of the two together does not seem to be a good solution, especially because some weeds are more susceptible to one herbicide than to another, so you're not really doing what you think you're doing. Several organizations followed the report's release with news releases of their own, praising portions of the report that fit their particular view. The Environmental Working Group responded to the report, which addressed both the pros and cons of mandatory labeling, by urging Congress to craft a national GMO labeling system. At the same time, the American Soybean Association praised the report, which it says, quote, reaffirmed that there are no adverse health impacts associated with the use of GMOs. For Market to Market, I'm Colleen Bradford-Krantz.